Thank you for being with us all through in our Facebook and YouTube, uh, Bishop Peter Gatimo and Apostolic Faith Church Bahati. Today we want to have a short moment of sharing the word of God. And the main issue and the question we need to answer, what do we do now? What do Christians, what are Christians supposed to do now? What do we do now? Uh, because uh, we have lived last year, that is 2020, now we are in 2021, and we have lived a very strange life. Something that you never expected, I never expected, our uh, plans were destroyed, stability or establishment that people had, emotionally, uh, mentally, socially, have been destabilized, and it's good to ask ourselves, what do we do now? Now, I'd like to share on one or two things that God uh, has placed in my heart. Let me take my Bible. <clears throat> has placed in my heart. And uh, about such a time. Such a time. One, let's go to John chapter 4. The gospel according to John, we read chapter 4. I hope you have your Bible with you. John chapter 4. And we read verse 13. Jesus answered, and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. In the name of the Lord, I want to submit to us and to each one of us a phenomena, a, a, a program that Jesus confirmed in my heart that he is going to activate he is going to release. He is going to cause in the hearts of brothers and sisters. You know the story in John chapter 4 about the Samaritan woman uh, whose Christ met at Jacob's well and the conversation. It started by being tribal when the woman said, you are a Jew, I am a Samaritan. And we have no compatibility. And Christ removed that question from there. And Christ insisted to the woman, if you only know the gift of God and the person who is what who is asking for water would ask him for another level of water. And Christ introduced two things to the woman. The gift of God. And number two, the person himself. Christ, the person himself. And they went ahead, went ahead. And the woman, if you go to verse, uh, verse 11, he, she said, the woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with. And the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water. Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his son and his livestock? No, the woman 
tried all the facts, historical fact, even comparing personality. Are you greater than Jacob who gave us this well, drank from this well, and the livestock, his livestock drank from this well? Are you greater? And um, Jesus eventually brought in an experience and said, woman, whoever drinks this water, it doesn't matter how long this water has existed. It doesn't matter the founder of the, of the well, but whoever drinks this water will thirst again. There's a lifestyle known as drinking water and thirsting again. I would like us to consider this issue whereby you, have, you can live long life on earth, but you have lived a season or a series of seasons whereby you drink this water and you become thirsty again. And then you proceed on another season, drink this water and you become thirsty again. A life whereby however active you are, however religious you are, however awake or maybe active you are, you find yourself reverting back to where you started. We call it being thirsty again. There is, there is a lifestyle the world has presented whereby people will always go back to where they started. People will always go back to where they found themselves in the beginning. We are thirsty. But whatever you take in finances, in, in, your, in your work, in your life, whatever you have, you let that go back to being thirsty again. We cannot allow the devil and the deception of this world to keep us busy in a program of drink water and then being thirsty again. There are people who have tried several wives. You're always yearning and looking forward to be satisfied. I want to tell you the truth. You still go back to being thirsty again. Yet, the deception is that you look for yet another wife. You go back again. Look for another man. Go back again. I say in just name. We cannot spend years. And grow old. In such kind of circles. We can't allow this. And Christ has come. At this time in history. To tell people. He has another program. We call it progressive program. We call it program of inheritance. We call it program of blessing where God make you rich in anointing, rich in prosperity and you never revert back to where you started from. This is a program that Jesus has for you. This is a program that my Savior has for you. Brothers and sisters, how many, how many are frustrated today you are going back to where you started. Things that you dreaded so much reappear and reappear again. And that's why today I want to change your position and by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I want to change your situation. You are not in the kingdom of my master. You are not supposed to go back and be thirsty again. I say by the authority of the blood of Jesus Christ, we want to cancel a program that is appeared to be natural and ordinary and comfortable, but people grow old after a season of going back again to the pains that you had before. Now, 
One thing you need to notice. Christ is putting a distinction in this manner. He wants to say this. If anybody will not drink from what Jesus is providing, they will still go back to pain. They will still go back to lust. They will still go back to lust, to, 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 to suffering and, and, and deficiency that uh, they have been experiencing. And we, in such a program, you end up having people, especially in the middle age, who are giving up very easily. People are giving up very In marriage, they are giving up. In talent, they are giving up. The Bible says the program that God has for us is from glory to glory, faith to faith. God is not God who takes us round, 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 repeating the same failures and lack. I said that one is not in the Father that we believe in. Christ says, I am going to give another level of life. And this is the level. Whosoever drinks the water that I shall give him. Have you received from Christ his own way of living? Have you received from Christ his program for your finances? Have you received from Christ his decree concerning how you should live? Have you received from Christ the water that he gives? Any man in this world who claims one day Christ said this about me, they are always renewed. And the word that God gave them command every season. Any prophet, any woman, any church youth who can stand and confirm that Jesus released into my soul a decree, a remote word that determines my life. Those people, they never go back to issues. It doesn't matter how, 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 how evil men and women may design or plan. Like now Joseph, God released his own word for his life. And his brothers decided to sell him or to put him in opposite direction, opposite of what God had declared. Because Joseph had seen himself being, uh, having like a kingship anointing, whereby people are bowing to him. But his brothers did not comply to the dream. They sold him to be a slave. But even at that point, the dream and the dream giver went with Joseph. And when he went to, uh, to Egypt, uh, Potiphar bought Joseph as a slave. And he put him over the projects of his house. I wanted to discover whatever Joseph laid hands on prospered. Whatever was not laid hands on by Joseph did not prosper. And the only option that remained is to make Joseph chief executive officer of everything. Why the dream was he, people and situations will bow to him. And eventually he died in prison. And in prison, the gift of interpreting dreams started working. And the gift made way for him to the throne until Pharaoh had to surrender all the, all the works and leadership of Egypt. And Joseph became the prime minister. Yes, friends, I say to you by the authority of God, it doesn't matter which direction people are taking you. The dream that God spoke about you we will follow you. The only warning I want to give to people are people who capture the dream, go with the dream, and you forget the dream giver. People praise vision. People praise program. People praise the dreams. But they forget 
to keep to work with the dream giver as long as you have the dream and the giver of the dream even if they send you to whatever direction you will always become what god declared about you and i say it shall be so in just christ's name the bible says christ and there's the voice of god that is message there is a rama word that is lifestyle there's a decree you want to release to brothers and sisters and this decree final word that determines life will produce in us a progressive lifestyle whereby we will be transformed or relocated from frustration, discouragement, and God you put us in a lifestyle where he says, whoever will drink from the water that I give, whoever drinks from what Christ gives, we will never, can you imagine, we will never thirst again. I tell you this powerful relocation and promotion. Can you hear from me? You will never go back to where you are now. Jesus will just uproot you, plant you into a program and lifestyle where he says, you will never last again. Proceed and inherit. And that's what God told me about this age and this time. By the grace of the living God. By the grace of the living God. And finally, he says, Jesus, your cause, a well in us. Do you know if there's anything that inhibits, that frustrates, that destroys men, is when the heart and the mind are blocked. But the touch that Jesus is releasing on us is so unique. He says, I'll give you a unique message, unique anointing that you transform your heart and that you become in your soul a well, a fountain of water springing unto everlasting life. Now, by the way, when the Bible talks about water in me springing into everlasting life, it doesn't talk about heaven. It's now. Everlasting life is a kind of power that springs up from the heart which cannot be subdued. Can, let's try to explain this. In this world, we have what we call mortal life. In this world, we have what we call life that is threatened by death. In this world, we have life whereby there is a limitation of curse of sin. Do you know what God is giving us? It is power that you spring up with the characteristics of God that Christ referred to as fountain of everlasting life. Which means you are going to rule over the mortal world with immortal power. We are going to rule over lack. Lack with the sufficiency of God. We are going to rule over pain with the healing power from the blood of Christ. It will spring from your heart. Another thing, you heart your church into leadership. Whereby, whenever anything comes over you, you find yourself lifted over it. God is giving us kingdom perspective of life. You know, it's like David. When David went to the valley, where there was battle between Israel and Philistine, you see there was the, this giant that was dreadful, threatening, and all people were running away from, from him. God, yes. But when, when, when David approached, from his heart springed up anointing that already declared death, judgment of a Goliath 
even before the battle was on. And the devil would ask, what, what will be given to that man who will destroy this Goliath? And the devil would declare, today Goliath, I come to you in the name of God, Jehovah God, the God whose army you have defied. And David would dare say, today I'm going to remove your head. Already the liver of living water is judging evil and all failures. And I say by the grace of God, the Lord you cause, Bishop Gatimo, the Lord you cause you to flow with something he's referring to as water uh, referring to as fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Not only getting saved or being good, but ruling the world with everlasting life that is flowing from our heart and ruling the real physical world with characteristics, ideas that takes over. Ideas that have everlasting life. Do you know what we mean? God is going to give us a chapter that will never be quenched, that will never be suppressed. It is everlasting life. Whatever you come on our side, it will meet us with the fountain of everlasting life. No other time in this world will there be something that will stop Christians. There's going to be a well, a fountain of everlasting life. Everlasting life means it is life that cannot be stopped. It is life that has everlasting characteristic. It is life that you survive and thrive and overcome. It is life that will heal, but it will not be sick. It will call healing, but not the world causing this life to suffer. Jesus is giving his water that you translate to fountain of water springing up into a blessing life. How will this happen? I know Jesus, you fulfill his word. As we pray, as you, we open up for prophecy, as we open up for anointing, because there should be anointing to overturn the world today. God will remove the altars of man, altars of COVID, altars of Satanism, and you will take over with the hearts of men who have fountain of living water. And I tell you, you will try to plan anything else, but the fountain of living water springing up into everlasting life will spread all over and never give any room to any demon. I say this by the authority of God, for God has spoken to my heart. Father, in just name, we release this message to the church. We release this touch to families. And now as I study this altar, I dethrone the devil. I cast the demon of COVID-19 and all its program. And every place where it's been manufactured, I cast the origin, I cast cast the strategy, I cast the program, and now I release the blood of Christ to take over the world and every human being living on earth. I now cover them in the blood of Jesus Christ. Satan, you never created anybody and you have no right whatsoever to take away life. I destroy death and all its program in Jesus' name. And Lord, by your word, I release deliverance for the world. In Christ we pray and believe. Amen.